Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And yes, we're back in the loft. But before we continue with the roof, I need to show you some more photographs of this garage. And um I haven't built it. So let me just quickly show you some photographs that was sent to me by Brian Watson. And as you can see, it's almost the spotting image of that garage. And how uncanny is that? All right, he's got different tiles on the roof, but let's just move that along. There's a different view. There's another view. And there it is again. Now it's weird seeing this, but um, he's done a good job of it. He's done a really good job of it. So thanks for sharing these photographs, Brian, if you're watching this video. And uh, I'm really pleased that um, someone like yourself has took it upon himself to copy one of my little jobs. So here we are. It's exactly where I left it uh, two weeks ago. Um, so how I'm going to do this? That's a good question. So if you remember uh, on the last update of this roof I had cut out some joiners of some brass channel two and a half mil by two and a half mil which gives you a one mil recess in there and what I've done there I have soldered half of it onto the end of this welding rod so that then will give me a joint when I put the other welding rod in from this angle. So that's the next phase of this roof is to solder up seven of these ready to be soldered across there. Now you can see where I'm going with this. So once you've cut your channels just run a file through there just to take any burrs off because they will stop the welding rods from being pushed right in because you want to push these welding rods in right to the back of that recess. So once you've removed the burrs then the next thing to do is to press home the welding rod into the channel which will then force the ends to open and make a nice snug fit when we come to solder. So you dip the end into the flux, you then force the welding rod into the joiner. Now you don't need to put any solder into the channel already because the flux will allow you to or it will allow the solder to go all the way around. Just gotta make sure that that's home. And you just need a little bit of solder, not too much. And it should go all the way around. And that's it. So if I take that off, lift it up and show you, you can actually see the solder has gone all the way around. It's gone all the way through into that joint there. I don't know if you can see that. It's gone all the way around. I think with it being brass, it just allows you to do that. I have set up the first tie bar which is hopefully going to join all these trusses together 
And as you can see here, um, I have marked 14 millimeters from the center of this joiner to the center of the first truss. And to hold this in place at the moment is a little tiny piece of copper wire wrapped around there and wrapped around there. Hopefully that's going to be set at 39 millimeters from the top pitch to the first tie bar. And here on the drawing I have marked out the setting out joints. Now if you look here you can see the edge forming round and that's where the tie bars are going to go. With the other end secured it's time to work on this end. So what I'm doing here I'm just putting this rule on on this side of the truss here and I'm just going to check to make sure I've got 39mm down from the apex and where that rod is sitting now, that welding rod is sitting now, that is 39mm. So the next thing to do is to get it to sit upright uh, before I put a tack on it. And it's not going to be easy. So let's just see if I can put that flat on that piece of wood and then just hold that up against the rule, keeping the weight of the rule pressed down on that piece of wood and hopefully that's a right angle. So we'll soon find out in a minute if this is correct. So what I'm doing here, I'm putting solder on both sides. Hopefully draw as much solder on this side as well. Obviously trying not to move it. Right. Let's check that again. Because it did move a little bit. needs to come down a touch. That's alright, we can reheat it and bring it down. Okay, a spot on 39mm and it looks vertical. Let's put a square on here, see if we've got vertical. Yeah, as close as I can get it. Right, so with both ends tied in and making sure that all these trusses are up against the stop and we've got a nice straight line and we can just start um, soldering these one at a time. So as we move along I'm just using this little bit of wood now to keep the distances the same because as you can see that some are like that, some are like that. So we know that this is um, quite good vertically up. So it's just a case of pinching them together I've got a little bit of flux on there already. So it's just a case of uh, working my way along. Making sure I get both sides of that welding rod. And it's easy as that. So we've moved on a little bit and um, that side's finished. 
So that's got the three tie bars in, so I'm just finishing off this lower tie bar. And then uh, we'll put one right across the top. Um, by having the two bits of um, wire here and here, which supports it while you solder the ends here and here, just move that in there a little bit, just here, um, helps to do the whole lot, line the whole lot up. And then what I do afterwards is I just check to see if the tie bars are in a nice straight line. And I'm just finishing these off now. You can see I'm only putting a tiny bit of solder on. And we'll uh, see how strong it is when we uh, take it out of the jig. Right, so that's it. I've put the last of the um, tie-ins in. So this is the uh, main tie-in. So it's time to see if it'll come out of the jig without it falling apart. breaking. Right, let's go and see what it looks like on the station. First section of roof has now been put on and there is a slight error but uh, I think I can live with that. Um, obviously, this side of the station is further forward than that side of the station. Hence, when you push the fascia up against the um, tie-ins, if you like, we have a gap here. That's not a problem because what I'll do is whatever that is there, that four millimeters, I will trim it off these ones down this side and then it'll bring the roof like that so it's tapered to fit. So that's not too bad, but uh, I do like the way these more or less sat on the fascia edge. I think that's more luck than judgment. So, looking better when it's painted. So now we're moving on to the next section. Now the next section of straight roof is a lot, lot shorter. Um, it's only going to work out at about 200 millimeters, so it's up to here where we need to fit the trusses. And uh, like before, I'm just checking the length of the trusses to make sure I've got my 297 millimeters. Uh, so that's the important part. If, if that's correct, then we can start putting them into the toasting rack as it were. And then what we'll do from there on is just check the heights across the top and how flush it is um, down the sides, making sure that they uh, line up before we start adding the tie-ins. And now we have the northern section complete. Well, the straight section that is. And um, it's stopped just proud of the recess here. Because the trusses, the next truss, will have to be trimmed to allow for the canopy on the far side there. Um, this end, 
I have already trimmed the edges and if you look closely we have a slight taper and then it gets narrow down the other side that's just to take up the offset that I have between the two buildings and I have a square there just to make sure that the fascia is upright as well so I'll do the same to the other end now that's got a massive gap the far side as you can see here it's about eight millimeters there and it comes all the way down to zero here so I've just got to trim these ones so this will go that way once I've trimmed it to fit the fascia and then we can start looking at how I'm going to do the center and here's a view of the roof from this side and I have trimmed the tie-ins to meet the fascia as you can see so that's done now so it's just the center section So in order to do this, I'm going to have to do it in situ, hence why we have tissue paper in the bottom to catch any flux and solder. I'm going to double it up with some card as well and try and cover up as much as I can before I make a start on this. But before I do that, I'm going to have to form some of these welding rods for this inner curve first so the shape continues from this section to this section and then once it's curved you can see what's coming next all I've got to do is just drop the copper wires into these joiners right I have protected the station by covering it over and I've put in one of the ties for the um, trusses and the next thing to do is just to put another one in at the top now I'm not going to solder these in I'm just going to put them in loosely for now because what I'm trying to do now is just trying to uh, work out what's going on here with the shape um, I've taken the fixture apart because I'm going to be using the, the battens and uh, could create a toasting rack in situ if that's possible so what we'll do we'll work on this side first put in the first one put in the first one here and then work inwards we get to the center and then uh, we shall see what that looks like I mean at the moment it's quite springy and uh, that's, that's what we want it to be to allow for any um, inaccuracies I have now permanently soldered this lower tie and just temporarily tacked this tie here and here on this edge so that it can be removed if this top wire is not long enough but it is at the moment and this is just going to give me a line for um, lining up the apexes while the lower one I've got a set distance from here to the underside of the tie that's already in situ and if as long as I keep that parallel the seam all the way around there and the apex is in line all the way around there I can then begin to solder these trusses in permanently and um, 
Do you remember the modification I made on these three trusses here? Well, I'm going to have to do the same to avoid any clashes with this canopy back here. And I've already done a pair here. Now, I'm going to use one of these as a template for all the others, making sure that they're exactly 295 in length from this point to this point. And then if that's the same, then it should follow um, the line, as it were. So this is what it's beginning to look like now after I've added five more trusses into the roof. Um, as you can see, I have permanently soldered this side at 27 millimeter spaces. But on the far side, I don't know if you can camera can pick that up, but the gap here is starting to open up along these trusses here. It's roughly 30 millimeter centers. Obviously when it gets round to about here the gap will be greater as the curve expands on one side and contracts on the other. And uh, once all the trusses are in and tapped to this rail here and then I can work out whether I need to change this top um, tie bar because at the moment that is just acting as a guide and it's not too bad judging by the centers we've got here well we have come a long way this week uh, with both ends done and a really good start on the center section. Um, it's going to take a bit longer to do the center section because each truss has to be modified so it misses the smaller canopy on that side and uh, as we have shown earlier on in the video. So I'm just going to take the camera down so we can have a, a closer look of what it looks like underneath because that's what we're going to see mostly when we uh, start doing running sessions. And uh, once that's painted, it'll look quite good, I think. So before we go, I just want to have a look at something that has arrived today. This is what has arrived in the post this morning. These Henderson Strong and Northern Relishes. And you get one of these with each wagon. Now I've tried this out on some French toast and it's absolutely yummy. So I just thought I'd uh, show you this. They're unusual, very unusual wagons. And uh, so I have got two of them. Yeah, established in 1885. You can see the date. I don't know if you can see the date on that. It's just. Yeah, established in 1885. That's uh, six years after South Shields was built originally. I know it's not a Tyneside um, uh, relish. It's, it's uh, Sheffield. But uh, yeah, when I saw the wagons, I thought, well, they're unusual. So I thought I'd uh, get a couple of these. Yeah, I got these from Rails of Sheffield and uh, they're $24.99 each, that's including the relish. Right, so I think that's all from me this week. Thanks again for watching and uh, stay safe everybody. And uh, if you're building a layout, have fun. Bye for now. Bye.